Okay, this video is for objective two with rocks and minerals. And we're speci specifically going to talk about minerals. Focus on their properties, their chemical properties, and what make them unique as far as the chemicals that make them up, and some physical properties. Uh, the first physical property of minerals is color. Color is usually the easiest one to pick out. This amethyst is like a nice purplish color. Citrine quartz, it's like an orangish. Rose quartz is like a pinkish. If you get the light on it just right, it looks pinkish. Right? And other samples of quartz can be clear, or they can actually even have dark spots. Well, the unique thing about these four samples is they're all the same thing. They're all varieties of quartz, and yet they're four different colors. And the reason for that is because of different impurities. So the most important thing to remember about color is, yes, it's easy, but it's not that reliable. It's not very important because impurities can easily change the color of quartz from one thing to another. Another valuable physical property is streak. Streak is the color of the mineral in a powder form. In order to find the streak, you take a streak plate and you rub the mineral, right, which is in this case is like a silverish grayish color, and you rub it across until it breaks off into a powder, and then you see that it's actually reddish brown. Even though the mineral doesn't look reddish brown, because of impurities, again, the color can fool you, the true color of that mineral is brown. The Indians figured that one out, that they could grind this up, make it into war paint that was like a reddish brown war paint, even though the mineral is not reddish brown. Uh, not all minerals are like that. This one would give you more of a grayish streak. So the color of the powder. The thing you want to remember about streak, streak is more reliable than color. You can fill that into your notes. It's better. Streak is more reliable than color. The third one is hardness. Hardness is the resistance of a mineral to being scratched. All right? It's not how hard it is, is, is whether or not you can scratch it. The easiest way to tell hardness is to take a mineral and rub it across another object and see if it will scratch it. Now when we do this in lab, I'm not going to want you to do it like this. I do not want the glass in your hand. So instead, what I want to do is I want to set the glass down on a flat surface, right, onto a desk, on the table, and I want to take a mineral and push it across. You might even be able to hear it, or if I pick it up and hold it just the right way, you might be able to see that it left a scratch. Right. So what does that tell me? This mineral is harder than the piece of glass. If one object scratches the other, it is harder. If it becomes scratched, it is softer. The glass is softer. Good example is if you had a bar of soap and you take your fingernail and you rub across it. You can take your fingernail and scratch the soap. The soap is soft, right? your, hard, your fingernail is harder. But if my, this mineral scratches my fingernail, right, then it is harder. So, so what we said is the harder mineral is going to do the scratching. All right? So the harder it is, all right, what, on most scale of hardness, it's going to be a larger number. So next thing I'm going to have you do is copy down most scale of hardness into your notes. The bigger the number, like diamond is 10, hard. Smaller number, like talc, a 1, really, really soft. And it'll compare minerals to objects like a piece of glass, a piece of steel, like a knife, a penny, those objects. So copy that into your notes. The next property is luster. Luster is how light shines or reflects off of a mineral. It's called shininess. So if you look at some samples that I have here, some are shiny, some are not shiny. They're like dull. So example, a metallic luster. How would you describe in your notes a metallic luster? Something like this pyrite right here. It shines like a metal. So when you look at it, it looks like a metal. Okay. Or the mineral right next to it. These are both metallic. This mineral here is also metallic. See how all three of those look like, like a piece of metal. They're shiny. Next type of luster is earthy. This piece of olivine right here is earthy. When you look at it, it kind of looks like it came out of the earth. It looks dirty. It's kind of like a dull, dirty, came out of the earth. Uh, dull, maybe this mineral right here. Right? It's not shiny. It doesn't have a lot of shininess to it. It's dull luster. Glassy. Uh, would be a piece of calcite. Right? It shines like a piece of glass. allows light to kind of go through it. Or these pieces of halite over here. Right. Those would be glassy. Uh, and another type would be waxy, like this mineral here. Right? It kind of looks like it's like a piece of wax, like a crayon. 
and it kind of shines if anybody's ever colored with crayons and you see the light shine off it has a waxy luster. Right. Next property is cleavage versus fracture. Right, the difference between them. Cleavage is when minerals break with smooth, even sides, smooth planes. Let me show you some examples of minerals with cleavage. I'll start at the end, the halite, these little cubes. Both of these are halite. Right. They break off into cubes. I did not cut them that way. You hit them with a hammer, right, and they break into small little pieces, and you get all these little tiny cubes, the rock salt. That's the way it breaks. It has cleavage. It breaks in smooth, even cubes. The reason for that is the way the atoms are arranged. This is a model showing halite. Look how all the atoms come together in a cubic structure. So when you smash it, it breaks off into these cubes. That's cleavage. Uh, galena also has cubic cleavage, little cube. Calcite, you can see it looks like I cut this. I did not. That's the way it breaks evenly. It breaks in three directions. Piece of mica, when you look at the edge, you say, oh, that's not smooth. That's all fractured. Look at this end. Oh, it's all fractured. But if I hold it this way and you see the layers, you can see that the top is nice and smooth. The bottom is nice and smooth. And when it breaks off, look at that piece. It breaks off in sheets. It breaks off with one flat direction of cleavage. It breaks off even. Fracture is when minerals do not have smooth, even sides to them. So here's a couple of minerals right here. Right, these three right here, if you look at them, they don't really have a distinct shape. If I take them and turn them around, right, there are, are no smooth or even sides. They just fracture into chunks. Uh, this mineral is another example of that. This, this mineral right here, this green one, all right, is a really good example of that. It doesn't, let me turn it around, you don't really get smooth sides. It just fractures off. That's fracture. The last, or not the last, the next two special properties are crystal forms and specific gravity. Crystal forms is just the geometric shape that the minerals form when they're inside the ground. Some minerals make crystal patterns. I'll show you a slide with some pictures of more crystal forms in just a second. And the last, next one is specific gravity, which is comparing the density of the mineral, to the density of water, which is a very valuable tool, uh, but we will not do that in our lab class. So the next two would be crystal forms and specific gravity. Good. talk about some special properties. Calcite is the mineral that bubbles in acid. So I put a little bit of acid on there. You can hear it, you can see it, and if you want to test this in lab class, let me know when you identify calcite. I'll put some acid on it and let you prove that yes, you have identified calcite. Halite tastes salty. I'm not going to taste it, that's disgusting. You can also notice the cubic cleavage. And then there's little pieces, oh, sorry, there's little pieces of it. If you've ever seen rock salt, all right, that's halite, tastes salty. Magnetite is magnetic. You can test this in your lab as well. If you think you find magnetite, let me know. We'll give you a magnet and you can prove that yes, you found magnetite. Telk, I don't have a piece, I left it at school, is really, really soft, it feels slippery. They grind it up into a fine, fine powder and they get talcum powder, like a baby powder. Right? And the last special property is fluorescence. So let's take a look at some minerals that fluoresce when they're put under UV light. Right, come right over here and you'll be able to see the yellow and the fluorescent green, the neon green, the orange, the purple of these fluorescent minerals. And when I turn the light back on, what you'll be able to see is they don't look like that color at all. They look totally different. Good.